If you guys stick around to the end of this video, I will expose the biggest pet peeve I have about the screen. What is up guys, welcome back to the channel and welcome back to another video. For those of you that don't know, my name is Antonio Matuire, I own a 2017 BMW 340i. So a lot of you guys have been waiting for this video, a lot of you guys have been messaging me on Instagram and YouTube, commenting on videos like, hey, when are you going to do the review on the Apple CarPlay screen that you got from Waka.com or whatever it's called. So that is what i'm going to do for you guys today so i did want to wait a little bit i did kind of want to get a feel for the screen um learn some of the functions learn what it can do because it doesn't come with like a manual it doesn't come with instructions or anything you order the screen they send you the screen and that's it so i really wanted to take the time to learn the screen before doing a review for you guys because i wanted to make sure that i didn't miss anything so there's a couple of things that i want to do for you guys within this review first i want to go over the functions of the screen and show you what it can do all the cool things that it can do that your oem screen could not do i want to go over some pros that i really like about the screen and i also want to go over some cons just little things that i don't i don't understand spoiler alert yes i do recommend this screen i have no desire to go back to my oem screen uh, but there are definitely there's a list of things that i'm just like why all right so really just jumping right into it when you turn on your car this is what you're going to see most of the time so unfortunately it does not connect automatically all the time and nine times out of ten you're going to have to click on the wi-fi car play so if you hit on original car it'll take you to your actual iDrive for your original bmw iDrive so you can see it has everything multimedia radio telephone etc so pretty much everything that you would see on the stock screen you have right there i do not know what this is and i cannot figure out how to get it off the screen um, if anyone knows what that is or how to get it off the screen please let me know but i've tried numerous things um, and i cannot get that off the screen i know some bmws have like the split view screen um, where it splits down the middle or it splits kind of like that but that's not the case with this i never had that in my old one so i don't even have the setting to remove the split screen so i don't know how to get this off so once again if anyone knows how to get that off please let me know um that would be great but anyway so when you're on this screen it is not touch screen as you can see if you try to touch it it'll automatically go back to this menu and so pretty much if you're in the original screen or in this mode you cannot touch the screen you have to use your controls down here to um to move it as you would as if it was the oem screen there's really nothing in here that changes when you upgrade your screen uh, it's all the same besides this little area over here as mentioned before don't know how to get rid of that but everything else on here is exactly the same what you saw on your oem screen is exactly what you'll see when you click original car all right so back to this screen always before you connect you always want to make sure that your wi-fi and your bluetooth is on or else it will not connect go ahead and click on the wi-fi connect as you can see it says bluetooth is not connected but this is one of the cons that i, I was talking about so even though your phone might be the bluetooth might be on and your wi-fi might be on the screen doesn't always pick up on that so what you're going to have to do is actually go to your settings in your phone click on bluetooth and if it's not connected see car kit even though your bluetooth's on it's not connected so you're gonna have to go ahead and click on it so it can connect and then once it's connected you'll see that it's connecting up here so that's definitely one of the cons of this screen you know every time you turn on your car it doesn't always automatically connect probably like nine times out of ten it won't and you're gonna have to connect it manually like that and it'll say you know turn on your bluetooth even though your bluetooth is on it doesn't matter it wants you to connect to the screen but in order to switch back and forth from the apple carplay view to your oem view is you're just going to hold down the menu button so you hold it down for about two seconds and then it should switch back to your oem like that and then once again hold down the menu button for about two seconds and then it'll switch back to your apple carplay sometimes it doesn't switch back to apple carplay view all you have to do is press connect right here and then it'll switch back right there all right so this is the home screen this is how i keep it usually you can change how the display this little box right here you can click on it It'll show you all your apps that you have. I have Spotify, I have Pandora, Google Maps, so on and so forth. And if you click this again, it'll change up the display. So if you do have Google Maps open, it's right there, along with whatever music you're playing right here. And then this is part of your navigation as well. You can voice to talk, but it's not the best. Once again, another drawback with this screen. Um, 
it doesn't really pick up your voice very well even with phone calls i've noticed that when someone's calling me or i'm trying to call somebody else it's very hard for them to hear me i'll be talking to them and they say it sounds like i'm really really far from the screen which is really annoying at times i mean now i've just found myself turning off my bluetooth when someone calls me just switching it from you know the phone call playing through my car to either putting my phone on speaker or just putting the phone to my ear and i don't know what it is i mean correct me if i'm wrong but the mic isn't in the screen you know i'm pretty sure it's somewhere in the car like right here so yeah i don't know why changing the screen affects the microphone but it is what it is but yeah pretty simple um like i said you can always have your navigation system on if you want if you want to play some music it does show right here let me go ahead and just select the song so you guys can see i love this because it does show you the the album cover art i don't want to play it i don't want to get any copyright bands but you can actually click on it to make it bigger and then it will show you that's weird and then it will show you the big view of spotify so while you're driving if, if you don't have a navigation system on you can just have your music up on the screen with the album cover art and once again it is touch screen so the cool thing about this you don't have to use it as a touch screen as you can see if i go ahead and start turning this knob you'll see it kind of highlight different things so you don't even need to touch the screen if you don't want to um, but it's just a lot easier in my opinion before you get the screen on your oem screen you get the title of the song and the artist but it gives you like this generic brown music note for the album art and it's just it's just not appealing at all so the fact that you get the cover art of whatever album you're listening to to show up on the screen is really nice just when i first installed this screen the audio quality was absolutely garbage like it literally sounded like blown speakers and like a honda civic or something it was bad and what i ended up having to do is go into the settings of the screen and change the volume of i guess the output of the screen if that makes sense putting the volume down of the song of the music wasn't working it was more of like putting the system volume within the screen down if that makes sense so let me go ahead and show you guys what i'm talking about this little car right here you click on that and then it'll bring you back to this menu right here and then what i ended up having to do is go to setup for the screen and then i had to go to sound settings and media volume right here i want to say it was at like 35 or 40 when i first got the screen and the quality of the sound sounded absolutely terrible so i went ahead and decreased it to 25 um, and it sounds a whole lot better uh, it sounds almost like the oem screen did when i'm playing you know music so i do recommend if your audio quality isn't great definitely go to your sound settings and check this out right here and make sure that it's not too high because if it is high it will make your speakers sound like they're popped and it, it sounds terrible i do apologize guys my camera overheated you know this vegas heat is no joke out here but anyway, let's continue. So while we're on the topic of the sound settings, not only did I have to change the media volume, but I had to lower the bass too, because after I changed the media volume, it's almost like when you're listening to a song, like it is just overpowered by bass. I don't know what it is with this screen, but like the bass sounds like terrible. Even now, you know, after I've been playing with it for a little bit, playing with the settings, it still sounds a little bass heavy, which is ridiculous because the bass settings that I have are in the negative so let me show you guys so once again you're going to your settings and you're going to go to the eq settings one, one more time and then right here is where you can change the treble alto and bass as you can see my bass is negative four and it still almost sounds a little too bass heavy when i'm listening to a song certain songs that have a lot of bass um it, the bass kind of drowns out the song and you can go ahead and turn up the treble but for some reason the bass is still super heavy so that is one thing i do want to point out to you guys uh, if you get this screen um just make sure that these settings are correct because if this bass is on like zero it's going to be ridiculous and honestly it's really only noticeable when the volume is turned down kind of low so if you're just like cruising and you're not like bumping to music it's a little different if you're bumping music obviously if your music is loud you're gonna want the bass to be loud with it but when you're cruising down the street and then you're just chilling vibing and the volume of the music is kind of low that bass is still like kind of overbearing once again those are my settings i had the bass on negative four that seems to that seems to work pretty well for me there's only a very select few songs that you know it still sounds bass heavy but those are just songs that have a lot of bass but if your settings aren't set correctly 
your audio quality is going to sound absolutely terrible. Every now and then, I guess depending on your connection, the the audio will cut out in and out real quick. So you'll be driving and then, you know, you listen to a song and then it'll cut out for like a millisecond and then, you know, start playing again. Sometimes it's a little longer. Sometimes it'll cut out for like a whole second and then, you know, cut back in. But apparently that's normal. I've talked to a couple of my friends that have Apple CarPlay, you know, from factory. And, and that's normal that the sound cuts in and out. That is still something I wanted to mention to you guys though. Another con of the screen is that when you're playing music and you put your car into reverse, the music stops. So when you put your car into reverse, it changes the screen. So for if you have a backup camera, you know, it changes the screen so you can see your backup camera. But with doing that, it cuts off your music. So that's why I wanted to show you guys what I'm talking about real quick. So if you are listening to music, and then as soon as you put your car into reverse and this screen pops up, since it switches from the Apple CarPlay screen to the OEM screen for your reverse camera, if you had one, it automatically cuts off your music because the music only works when you're in the Apple CarPlay screen, if that makes sense. And I guess that's another con within itself. That happens not only when you put it in reverse, but anytime you're going back and forth on the screens, it'll cut off your music. So if you're listening to music on your Apple CarPlay view, and then say you needed to check when your next oil change is due, or you want to check your brake pad level, or maybe you even want to pull up your little sports display where you can see your torque and horsepower. As soon as you go back to that OEM screen look, your music cuts off. If you want to listen to music while you're in your OEM screen, you have to connect to your actual BMW's Bluetooth. All right, so my camera is done being hot, so we're back on that. One huge pro of this screen that I absolutely love is the fact that I can have a navigation system. This car, when I bought it, did not come with a navigation system, so I always find myself holding my phone or using this mount right here. I don't even use this mount anymore, by the way, but I always held my phone right there on that mount. And so now having a navigation system in a car, especially in 2021, is kind of ridiculous. I feel like all cars should come standard with a navigation system, whether it even be a small screen, big screen, whatever. Another thing I like about this screen is that you have the option to go ahead and connect a backup or a rear view camera to the screen. I didn't opt for the backup camera when I bought the screen, but you can, that is an option you can do. And once you hook it up to the screen, all you have to do is run the wire to the back of your vehicle, mount the camera back there, and then you have a backup camera. This car did not come stock with a backup camera. So maybe sometime in the future, I'll buy the backup camera. So that's another plus as well. If you don't have a navigation system and or a backup camera, purchasing this screen can get you both of those. So another great thing about this screen, I mean, it, it might sound obvious, but it's true, is the fact that it's just bigger than the OEM screen. And not only is it bigger, it's touchscreen. So like, what more could you want? You can do a lot more with this screen, with it being touchscreen, than you could on your old screen. I think the last pro I have is that the buttons on the steering wheel actually work. So for the longest time, this little scroll knob did absolutely nothing uh, when I had my OEM screen, but with this one, when I'm on Spotify, this scroll knob actually changes the song. Scroll down once, and as you can see, the music changed. So this scroll knob actually works with the new screen as opposed to with the OEM screen. This did absolutely nothing. If you scroll, it'll still say not possible right there on the little mini cluster, but it is scrolling through the music, although it says not possible right there. And lastly, this is probably the biggest pet peeve that I have with this screen like this is this tops everything is when you are connected to the screen recording on snapchat forget about it when you're connected to the screen for some reason now it could just be my screen I don't know you guys let me know if you have the same problems but for some reason snapchat will not work or will not let you record while you're connected to the screen. So let me go ahead and show you guys exactly what I'm talking about. Let me go ahead and connect to the screen. Boom, all right, we're connected. And say I see a really cool car. And we'll pretend it's a really cool car. Say I see a really cool car driving down the street and I wanna take a snap of it. Ooh, look at this car, super, super nice. Yeah, all right. I let go and watch. It is just frozen. I do not know why when you're connected to the screen, you cannot take 
videos on Snapchat. It's almost like you try to take a video and it automatically just turns into a picture. And this bugs the crap out of me because especially me, you know, being a YouTuber, I love taking videos of like nice cars when I see one or even, you know, if I'm doing a pool, I wanna take a snap of it. And I just cannot do that while connected to the screen. So if I ever do wanna take a Snapchat of something, I have to completely disconnect from the screen which means I can't play music, I can't see my navigation system, I can't do anything. And then and only then can I record a Snapchat. But I do not know why the screen does not allow you to use Snapchat because you can record a video from your phone. It allows you to do that while you're connected. Like, okay, look, okay, ooh, I see a cool car, record it, pretty nice. When I play it back, it'll actually play as the video but only through your camera. You cannot record on Snapchat and I do not know why. That pretty much wraps up everything with the screen. I do apologize it took me so long to do this review, but like I said, I wanted to make sure I didn't miss anything. You know, I think I have a pretty good understanding of the screen now. You know, I hope this review helps you guys out and making your purchase. All in all, I would definitely still recommend this to anybody. Yes, like I said, there it does have its drawbacks, but as compared to the OEM screen, I think this is way better. You know, there's just a lot of stuff that you can do with this screen that you couldn't do with the OEM one. So although it does have a lot of little things that I do not like about it, um, it's still better than the OEM screen at the end of the day. In my opinion, I think it's a great purchase. Like I said, I spent about 300 and some change on this, probably like 330, 340. Probably like the best 330 dollars I've spent on this car. Investing in something that you look at every day, especially on the inside of the vehicle, is probably like one of the best investments you can make. But just like that, that wraps up today's video. If you guys have any questions on the screen or any other BMW related questions, just let me know. If there's anything that I missed or any questions that you have that I didn't answer within this video, video go ahead and leave a comment down below and i will try to get to you guys uh, and answer all your questions that you might have it'll probably be easier to reach me through my instagram so if you don't already follow me on instagram you can follow me at matwire if you like this video or helped you out anyway give it a thumbs up consider subscribing to the channel and just like that i will catch you guys in the next video peace excited just to see me wish i felt the same way i know i should probably get a name change people changing on me like they gain weight